Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. Welcome back to some Factorio Space Age. And we are on the volcano planet. Um, Volcanus. Yes, we are. We are on Volcanus. And we are chilling out in our volcano base. And yeah, so not much has happened back on Now Beast that I really need to talk about. Um, pretty much all happened on Volcanus and on the ships. Um, one thing I will mention, I'll go over to my Volcanus supply ship. I redid everything it supplied. Um, it used to have all the very specific buildings, like I was even moving over nuclear power plants and crap like that. I moved over to the raw resources instead. And the main reason is the rocket capacity is huge. Like iron plates, for example, stack size 100, rocket capacity 1,000. So you can transport 10 stacks in one go. Um, as opposed to the transport belts, for example, it's a one-to-one. -one. And sometimes it's even less than a one-to-one. -one. So the raw resources are a lot easier to transport in terms of sending the rockets up to the space platform. Uh, another reason is if I, there's not really much, the supply ship, I extended it a little bit because there wasn't enough space in it. So I made it a bit bigger, put some more solar panels on it. Sometimes you get asteroids hitting from the side after you've reached Volcanus, but that's only happened once. And so I just added some repair packs and it self repairs itself, um, which is good. Never had any problems, never had anything at these being destroyed. I did have to do a little bit of an update. Um, I used to put the old, the um, regurgitated asteroids back down on the belt. That turned out to stall at one point, which was not great. So instead I just feed them up here and I've got a little splitter that puts them down on the top. So you can't put them down the bottom because the bottom is where the vast majority of the asteroids are. You've got to put them on the top. So that's what I did over here. I've got a similar one for the ice one. Uh, I didn't bother with the metal one because, yeah, it directly inserts into the electric furnaces, so there was no room for anything else. But at this point, this is the last bit of it, so it's it hasn't stacked up yet. It was the carbon one that stacked up, and pretty much the entire belt was full. The entire loop was full of carbon, and it was just completely stored up, so yeah. This is, this is my supply ship, it just arrived. Uh, Yes, yeah, so anyway, so I switched over to raw resources and then look at all those raw resources come down. It only brings down what it's missing, which is a fair amount of stuff. Um, so this base is semi self sufficient at this point. It's not fully self sufficient. Um, it still relies a lot on these resources being built, being sent over regularly, but it doesn't fully. And I, and I think eventually. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I think eventually I can get it to the point where it's 100% self-reliant on Volcanus, at least. I'm not sure if I could do it on the other planets, but on Volcanus I can. So let's have a look. We got a single rocket going off, and that goes up to the pickup. And the pickup it requests two things. It requests 4,000 me metallurgic science packs and 200 of the big mining drills. And then, basically, I've got a nice little circuit condition here. So it's sitting at Nalvis. It will leave when either the science packs are zero or the big mining drills are zero. So one of these has to be zero. Now, I had to do the Boolean logic like this, where I duplicated these, because, yeah, you can't do a this and this and this or this. You just can't do it. When you put an ore up, it uh, yeah, it just doesn't work. So you put the you can't have the and on the left hand side. You have to have the ore on the left hand side. There's no other way to do it. So that means you can do it with the logic you want, but you just got to duplicate some conditions, which is yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but it's fine. So this this is actually pretty good because it's just going to sit here. The supply one. I wanted to do the same. I tried to set a condition um, where it just sits here and just sits at Volcanus until any request has not been satisfied. I thought about doing that. The problem with that is, um, well, first of all, I think it's broken. It didn't really work properly. But 
The second thing is when it gets over there, it will have used a little bit of reserve ammo on the journey. So this will then be not uh, requested, which would automatically break this. So I basically did 30 seconds of inactivity or 120 seconds. That's more than enough time to drop a whole bunch of stuff done onto the planet. Uh, and the planet's not gonna use up everything. So I'd like to set this a little bit. We could actually manually set this. Let's make it 240. That seems like a little bit more decent in case it's like a new planet and you really want to drop everything down. Um, oh, one other important thing. I was very worried when I set up, uh, where is this? When I set up this rocket, that it was going to start, that the supply ship would get here and this guy would start sending up like iron plates and green circuits up to the supply ship because the supply ship obviously requests iron plates and green circuits. So I was very worried about that. And I actually spent a little bit of time Googling how to figure it out. And I couldn't because there's not too much information. But then um, it turns out it was already good because here's the thing. Each of these guys, you see it's got an import from. So it imports it from Navis. And by default, all of these planet supplies that I added are imported from Navis because that's their home world, basically. You can manually override it, um, but by default, it's imported from here. And let, let's say I add in this one, by default from Volcanus, this one by default. So it always defaults to the planet that it's supposed to be made from, which is good. And then for the pickup one, um, these ones are both imported from Volcanus. So it just automatically works. So I don't have to worry about this rocket accidentally sending stuff off to the supply ship when it shouldn't be. Um, so it's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. It's, uh, I, was, I was looking for a setting on the ship that would be like load, like I wanted a load checkbox here or something like that. But it turns out you don't even need that because you can individually specify per resource which planet it gets loaded on, which is really nice. I wonder if I can actually do it multiple. If I could add another section That's interesting. So I can have Express Splitter from Nalvis, and then down here I can have Express, express um, thing from Fulgora. That's cool. I like that. I very much like that. But anyway, our supply ship is heading off to Volcanus. It's successfully got all of this. You can see before it was very, very close to being filled up. Now it's got plenty of space because I extended it this massive amount. The solar panels are getting a little bit clouded by the uh, rockets, but Anyway, that's pretty much all uh, I got to say about the ship. Not much else has changed in there, really. Uh, a little bit of fiddling, but it's mostly still exactly the same ship. So let's talk about Volcanus, because Volcanus, there's some really interesting recipes and very interesting ways of doing things. Solar is great on this planet. Yeah, it's 300% bonus to solar power. Not really a bonus to um, accumulators. I don't think so this this is probably this is my um, home planet ratio it's probably not the correct ratio on Volcanus I probably needs more accumulators and less solar panels but it gets the job done I mean the base doesn't brown out overnight so it's fine but yeah those accumulators do drop down a very fair bit but so I've got three of those little solar panel things and they power the entire base because 300% power why wouldn't you um, so let's talk about the resources on this base. So we've got calcite. Uh, this is just some weird resource that you just mine. So it's got a little mine over here. Speaking of Volcanus, there are cliffs everywhere. I turned off cliffs. And uh, you were able to turn off cliffs for the other two, uh, for these planets. Gleba, Fulgur, you're able to turn off cliffs. Nalvis, you're able to turn off cliffs. There was no option to turn off cliffs for Volcanus. And look at all these freaking cliffs. So this is a bit of a mess. Um, you see I've got the blue belts going underground and doing stuff, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, calcite, you can just mine. You can also mine some coal. And then we've got tungsten ore over here. Tungsten ore you can only mine with the big mining drills. Cannot use the little ones, it doesn't even work. So you've got to use the big ones. Um, and this, this patch is actually quite small, 227K. So I'm a little bit worried about that. 
There's a bigger one over here, which is 8.8 .8 million. Um, we got a sulfuric acid um, pump as well, which I've got all of these tapped. But yeah, the calcite, I haven't got it fully tapped. The coal, I haven't got it fully tapped, although it's starting to uh, wear through that a little bit. So I'm gonna have to fix that in a second. Um, but yeah, so those are the three, well, the four main resources, sorry. So we've got the tungsten ore, the coal, the uh, calcite, and then we got the sulfuric acid. Oh, and the lava. The lava, you just chuck a water pump. You just chuck your regular old water pump into the lava and it's all beautiful. You can't, I tried filling in the lava because this was getting very awkward. I couldn't get too many mining drills on it. So I tried to use landfill to fill in the lava. It did not work. Um, apparently you need a proper foundation, which you don't get, you get quite a bit later. Here we go down here, foundation. So you can fill in lava once you've got this guy, but this guy requires the cryogenic science pack, the, all of the science packs up to the final planet. So yeah, it's going to be a while before we get that. But we don't actually need that much. It's like the space science. It doesn't actually, I'll get onto this bit in a sec. This is making some supplementary um, low density structures and rocket fuel just to help the rocket out a bit so I don't have to import everything. Um, so yeah, basically we take coal and sulfuric acid, we make it into this weird carbon, which we saw on the space station, but now we're making it on the ground. If you destroy trees on this planet, there are weird trees, and if you destroy them, they give you carbon, which is quite interesting. So turn the carbon into this tungsten carbide um, using the tungsten ore, and then we also make tungsten plate using tungsten ore and molten iron, which we get from the lava. We calcify the lava and we get molten iron and some stone byproduct. And over here, we're doing something similar, getting the molten copper basically the same way. And then we take the plate and the carbide and some molten copper and we make the metallurgic science packs. So this is it. This, uh, this setup right here will produce 120 science per minute. It actually does a bit more than that because these foundries have a built-in 50% productivity rating. But it hurt my head to try and calculate using a 50% productivity rating. Because um, I, do, I do most of my calculations in my head and 50% productivity just made my brain hurt so I just ignored it. So we're actually producing a lot more than 120. Well, we're producing 180, there we go. So that 50% is just doing the good job. and. All these lava, because I think pretty much all of them use foundries, so they're probably producing extras. Um, and I send some of this carbide off here. So these are making the foundries. You can only make, I think you can only make the foundries here. Yeah, you can only, you can only make the foundries here. I should probably be making the foundries in a foundry instead of here, because then you get a 50% productivity. But anyway, we made 100. I was shipping those back to Nalvis, and then I realized there was no point. Um, you can't really, there's no point using them on now beast. They don't really, uh, they're not really used for much. Um, most of the recipes that the foundry has, if we have a look at the recipes, you can use all of this sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, 50% productivity, not too bad. Maybe I should use it for some of these, but meh. And then these two you have to make on here. And then these guys are all like molten iron or molten copper or molten lava. So there's no point actually bringing them, using them on Nalvis. You can use them on Nalvis, but probably not much use. Maybe I would use it for some of these things um, for uh, the productivity. But I think what will ha eventually happen is I will produce the turbo splitters from scratch on Volcanus. So I was gonna like send the express belts over and then turn them into the turbo belts but I think well, I'll just make the turbo belts from scratch over here. And you can do it. You can make iron, you can make copper. I mean we're making molten copper here so there's a recipe to turn molten copper into copper. We're turning molten iron into iron. So yeah and you can make green circuits and red circuits and all that sort of stuff. 
So yeah, you can make you could we could pretty we could absolutely create all of the things that this um, guy needs on planet, so we don't have to ship in any of them. So eventually, we won't need this any of these planet supplies for this to continue moving. I haven't done that yet. Um, this this is a good setup. This is a solid setup. 120 SPM. This is a very jank setup. Um, as you can see, what we're doing here is we're taking calcite, coal, and sulfuric acid, three of our core resources, using it to do heavy oil, and then we're doing our good old cracking recipe. Oil, steam, and coal. And we get the steam from this weird recipe, which takes calcite, sulfuric acid, produces steam. I don't understand this. This seems like a bit of a janky acid neutralization. It's like a angel's... Py um, pyro, poly, whatever the petrochem angels. It feels like an angel's petrochem recipe. That feels a little bit jank that they just inserted it because they're like, oh, how do we get water on a lava planet? Okay, acid neutralization. Let's just invent something and throw it in there. Um, but anyway, you can take this steam for this. You can convert the steam to water, and Bob's your uncle. So then I've just got a little bit of cracking over here. A little bit of plastic production, which is very slow because this thing produces petrol like not a lot. Very, very little amounts of petrol. Uh, up here I'm creating rocket fuel and when there's enough light oil I also crack it down into petroleum. And yeah, rocket fuel up there and then send the plastic over and we've got low, light density, low density structures which take iron, copper and plastic. So they're quite slow but... Yeah, we got some low density structures and we've got um, rocket fuel. And I haven't tried making blue circuits, but I will at some point. Now, the interesting thing is this. This is a passive provider. I don't know what the, um, what the actual deal is with this. Maybe we'll do a test actually. I'll do a test and I'll see where they come from. All right, blue circuits. Okay, that's not good. It's taking low density structures and rocket fuel out of this guy. That's not good. I don't want it to be doing that. I want it to be... Um... Okay, let's do it again. I want to see if it takes it out of the storage, the storage depots. Okay, so it does take it out of the storage depots. And then a few extra bits over here. So it seems like this is higher. Well, wait a sec. There, um, can we do? I think there is a way to do priorities for some of these guys. I could have sworn there was. Logistics. Where did I see priorities? I could have sworn that's spoiled priority. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, I could just want to sort priority settings for Yeah, I don't know Like logistics priority or something. Maybe that was trains. Maybe the train station had priorities on them. I Wouldn't have been surprised if that was the case. Yeah, okay, yeah, here it is, priorities. All right, so we've got priorities here. Eh, okay. I kind of would like logistics priority. I mean, I could put these in an active provider. Um, and then these guys only turn on when the logistics network has less than blah. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, I can figure that out at one point and then the good thing about that is, once I've got this set up, um, will be completely the supply train. The supply and ship will never be needed anymore. Um, well, that having said that, it doesn't cost me too much. The main thing we'll be saving is we'll have less rockets being launched off Nalvis up to the supply. I'm not sure if I showed you last time, but I got full prod mods on these guys. It's awesome. I have unlocked um, a bunch of different things. Let's talk about what I unlocked. Um, low density structure productivity. I unlocked that and I'm churning through that now. So I'm going to get level five, which is 7,593. This has got to be some square root malarkey going on here. 
2250. I think, no, it's not square root. It's like multiply it by 1.5 every time. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so I got that. What else did I get? Um, not really much that was interesting. I got artillery, which I don't care about. I got the turbo, but I need a lot more. Um, I need a lot bigger base on Volcanus to do that, which I will get set up. Speed module 3s, they require tungsten carbide, which is interesting. I thought about this. I might, I will either make these from scratch on um, Volcanus, or I'll send tungsten carbide back as an independent resource to, uh, to Nalvis. But I'm not sure what. This stacks to 500. Okay, rocket capacity 500. That's not too bad. Because you think about it, the speed module, each speed module takes one tungsten carbide for a level 3 speed module. So that's not too hard. And the thing is, to make these from scratch on, um, on Volcanus, you would need to make a buttload of red circuits, a buttload of um, blue circuits, green circuits at the wazoo. That's, that's going to be very painful because red circuits are hard enough on Nelvis. I would not want to make them at scale. And, and it's speed module threes, okay? We're talking mega bases. You, it's going to be insane making them on now v so i do not want to make them on volcano so we're not we i think we're going to send the tungsten carbide back and then use it for making the speed modules back there so we unlocked um coal liquef liquefaction um li liquefaction i don't know why i keep saying it incorrectly but whatever liquefaction so that's good we'll start transitioning over to that on now Vs at some point uh cliff explosives which is nice um they're going to be useful. They're going to be very useful on uh, on uh, Volcanus. Not useful on any other planet, but on Volcanus, very, very useful. And yeah, automatically includes um, cliff destruction into the uh, into deconstruction planner and all the other planners, which is awesome. I think that was already in uh, the base game, but it's nice to see it again. And asteroid reprocessing, which I think we touched on before. Or maybe. So you just basically convert it into the other parts. If you've got too many metals, you can convert it into the other resources if you're overflowing. Which is nice. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be introducing that into my spaceship design anytime soon. Maybe. Because right now I just let them sit for a little bit longer and eventually they get their act together. Um, like the supply one. What are you doing at the moment? Okay, so you just arrived at Volcanus. Um, you're building up the fuel again, but the, look how fast it's being built up. That's fine. We don't need any reprocessing. Usually as part of the trip... Uh, oh, look at this. Water is through the roof. It's actually low on iron at the moment, which is really interesting. So, yeah. But these guys are putting down a decent amount of iron ore there. So it's not often that we uh, run out of iron ore, actually. These guys have actually got quite a few iron stacked inside them. Which is annoying because this probably... Yeah, this is definitely triggering the uh, logic which will be throwing the uh, metal away. The metal asteroids. But they're, they're all getting... Some of them are getting chucked away. Most of them are getting chucked in here. So, But yeah, these um, electric furnaces are not quite fast enough. But it's backing up now, so it's all good. Oh, it's actually started moving. It's starting moving back to Navi, so that's why it's going nuts now. So, yeah. No, this is good. Um, this science is actually relatively easy to make. I mean, relatively easy. From raw resources, we got three, six, six different processes, which is not too bad. I mean, and the scale to get 120 is not too bad. Having said that, this is comparable to about purple science. It just feels easier. I don't know, it just feels so easy. But then again, it's 120 BPM, so it's supposed to feel easy. But yeah, um, it's good though. It's very, very good. I'm starting to feel like um, definitely 1K SPM is definitely within reach on these various planets. Um, 
we just need to really hit the resources hard, like calcite 12, calcite 7.8. We're gonna to have to go planet to planet and we're gonna to have to, like, we're gonna to have to set up a trade network on this planet. That's like a 100% um, absolute thing. Uh, we'll probably use rocket fuel for the trains. I don't think we're gonna use using nuclear fuel. I don't think there's uh, any way to get nuclear on here, to get uranium anyway. We could ship it in, but nuts to that. We'll just use rocket fuel for the trains. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a full on train base um, I won't worry about that too much. I might do a little bit more work, but he's, I don't know. I don't know if I'll actually do much more work. I mean, it's taking some stuff off here, but that's just going to put a little bit of extra strain on now, Beast, which I'm not really too concerned about. So I may just not worry about it too much. And I mean, how many mining drills do I really need? I mean, not, I mean, we can make tons of them over here, but at some point we'll have enough mining drills that we'll be sending back, we'll be sending back a bunch of this stuff, and uh, yeah, so it's not, it's not too bad, and eventually, I'm not sure exactly how these endgame sciences work, um, or how, mu how many endgame sciences we'll actually be using. Uh, rocket part productivity, oh god, this, this is going to be a really good one to get, but it needs cryogenic science pack, all the way, I'm just looking and seeing what other sciences we might be getting that require the metallurgic science down the line. There's not that many. The, all the infinite metallurgic ones are either artillery or the low density. Um, low density we'll be getting a ton of. Other than that, there's some miscellaneous ones, a quillo, a railgun, a bunch of these are like all the end game things, fusing reactor 2000. So we're gonna need a bunch of it. But in terms of the infinite science, I don't know if we'll actually be doing anything infinite with the metallurgic. Railgun, uh, I'm not sure if I really care about that. I mean, maybe it'll be useful for shooting asteroids or maybe we'll need it to go to the final planets. This one probably. I mean, okay, lab research productivity plus two. Okay, this one. Yes, this one we'll be doing quite a lot of. Uh, <laughs> that one will be awesome. That one will be part of our rotation, 100%. But yeah, our rotation will pretty much be research productivity. Probably the productivity for the three rocket things. Maybe some steel. I'm guessing it will mainly be mining productivity. Maybe some bot speed. Uh, that sort of stuff. But yeah. Actually, where does bot speed come in here? Uh, where does... All right. Oh, bot speed is just the uh, the tech planet space. The tech sp planet science is where it goes infinite. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. So the tech planet and the tech planet also gives us infinite blue circuits. So that's very interesting. Yeah, I don't know if I'd ever actually automate blue circuits. What I'd probably do is I'd figure, okay, we want 1000 science per minute, Met metallurgic science. We can launch a rocket with each each sign stacks up to 1,000 per minute. So each rocket stacks up to 1,000, which means we need to launch one rocket per minute, which means we need 50, well, th uh, 50 divided by productivity. So we need approximately 50 processing units per minute, and it would automate that on this planet. And maybe a little bit extra so it can do um, whatever it needs to do, like sending out mining drills and the tungsten carbide or whatever it is. A little bit extra, so let's say 60, 60 blue circuits per minute, so one blue circuit per second. Do the same with the rocket fuel and the low density structures, and yeah, definitely make this planet 100% um, independent. But we don't do anything stupid like trying to make speed module threes on Volcanus all the way through, because that's stupid. Um, and we still ship in resources every now and then, like this sort of stuff. So if we want to make some beacons on here, we can do that. Um, maybe at some point when we start getting to mega base levels, we'll start shipping in modules like the tier threes and so on and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, for now, now I think I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. Like this, this base is good. 
it's fairly solid, but I'm a little bit worried about these resources. Like it's gone from 227 down to 223, which is okay. But yes, yeah, so we need to fully tap this, fully tap this. This one's already fully tapped. This one's going great. Um, I'd like to sort of get a few more resources, but we don't really need to hit this base too much more. It's more like you come back and you set up a new mining thing in like 10 hours or five hours or something like that. That's the kind of stage we're at. So the science is fine. The mining drills are fine. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll bump this up a little bit. Yeah, it's going pretty good. Let's bump it up a little bit. Create a few more of these. The red circuits are being imported. The mining drills. I am kind of making them online, but I'm using iron from the ship that I've imported. I'm not making my own iron yet. Green circuit's doing the same. Um, I don't know why I'm doing half of this, but anyway, mining drills, I'm doing the same, but I'm importing the iron and the green circuits. So yeah, Mike, definitely I want to have a base here. Well, I've said it like 10 times. I want to have a base that's fully 100% uh, independent. I don't know if I want to do that now. I don't know if I can be bothered doing that now. I mean, meh, meh. I don't, I don't think I'm going to worry about it too much, to be honest. Uh, let's go... Let's turn off logistics. And let's go back home. Travel to my personal space station, please. Oh, and speaking of the power here... Um, yeah, it uses about 100 megawatts. And I'm providing about 150 megawatts. So it's a little bit tight. It's, it's quite tight, actually, but, uh, yeah. My thinking is, at this point, I don't really need much. Like, we're going to run out of those bit uses for metallurgic science fairly quickly. Uh, we're going to use a ton for the low-density structure, uh, whatchamacallit? the low density structure uh, productivity, that's gonna take a chunk of it. But I, know, I don't know if I'm gonna, I might, I'll probably try and go up to 10 actually. I'd love to go up to 10, but that's gonna be a whole bunch of science. Hmm. We'll have to see. I'll probably slow roll it, try and slow roll it up to 10. And I'll probably weave that with the mining productivity as well. So that I don't overload Volcanus's uh, science producing abilities because yeah if we go over to Nalvis right now this guy is uh, 4,000 4,000 science in there which is a decent amount maybe we could cache even more but it's fine yeah I don't know what it's dropping it's just dropping little bits it's just like drip feeding the science down as it goes out, which is fine. What does that mean for the pickup? Oh, of course, this one's just gonna sit there forever until either the science is gone or the cargo is gone, which I like, it's, which I definitely like. And I mean, Volcanus is gonna build up for a long time because I did not cap these passive providers. They're just gonna keep building forever, which I am fine with. Um, yeah. And this this will eventually run. I think this one's going to run out of resources. This one, I should probably actually, I could probably remotely uh, do this. Well, no, that's wrong. Remotely hit that up a little bit. I don't know how many... Well, I've got tons of mining drills, actually, because... Uh, yeah, because I'm building them, because I'm converting them to big mining drills, so that one should be fine. Uh, I did say I wasn't actually going to play this on uh, on stream, on, on the video, didn't I? It was just supposed to be an overview video, but whatever. I'll show off some of the new features in any way with this sort of stuff, because this is, this is pretty cool, a lot of the things you can do. You can see you just place it down like normal. Usually, 
In the past, in map mode, it might have some problems with that sort of stuff, but here it just behaves exactly like normal. Uh, now there should be a bunch of belts here. So it should be fine. And the supply ship is currently sending over belts. Um, I was originally sending over belts because I thought it might be a problem to get lubricant on this planet. Um, and then I ended up sending lubricant barrels over directly, which solved that problem. But I still keep sending these over. And now I figured out I can create heavy oil from scratch. So now, I, yeah, as I said, I can completely remove everything from there. So. Let's go ahead and put that one there. That should hopefully be enough. Oh, that's actually outside the range. Whoops. Okay, let's put another one over there. Are you going to be enough to do the whole thing? Maybe. We can put another one over there and then we might put one on the, this side. That one should be good. That one should be close enough. Yeah, it's definitely close enough. Okay. So that will do it. Oh, I forgot to mention um, all this stone byproduct. It's got no use whatsoever. Um, oh, yes. Robots get randomly damaged on this planet. I'm not sure why. I think the trees are on fire. And so when the bots destroy the trees, sometimes they get hurt. Uh, but as long as you got some repair packs, then you're usually fine. And this guy has repair packs. I put some repair packs in this, in one of these robo ports. I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, let's just make some repair packs just to be safe. Just to be safe. So I was about to say, with the stone, uh, I'm converting it all to landfill and then chucking it in this chest. That's it, that's all I'm doing. Um, nothing fancy going on here. Did that work? It did work. Uh, need gears. That's all right. I can put you in a chest as well. And then that will be the gears. Okay, so that gets repair packs automated. Okay, this is all good. This is all very, very good. Um, so that'll keep the coal going for a little while. This guy, it doesn't actually use much calcite. If we have a look at these recipes, um, like, where is it? Like, to convert molten iron from lava, you get 250 molten iron, and you only use one calcite. So calcite gets used up very, very slowly. And the same thing with the molten copper. So yeah, calcite will take a while, but I'll we'll have to go back eventually and fix that up. But yeah, I'm more worried about this guy. This I think this one's gonna run out first and give me problems. But who knows? How's power doing? We're actually using 143, but a lot of that is for the yeah, 50 megawatts for the accumulators. And the day is just long enough for the accumulators to fill up. Although we just added some more robot ports, so we might have put that in jeopardy. But I am sending solar panels to this um, to this planet as well, so we can we can just smash down another one of these anytime we want. And this guy has everything it needs for a planet solar supply, so it's all good. Here we go. Should have enough belts, should have enough of these. Power poles we might run out of, but I've got a lot of crap actually left over from when I was originally sending over all of the specifics. Like we got steam, we probably got some nuclear reactors from when I sent it over. Um, so there's a whole bunch of random crap, which is actually nice because I didn't have to make it all by hand using the raw resources, but we're not doing that anymore. Definitely not. We're sending raw resources from now on. Anyway. That will, uh, that will get slowly taken care of, and that'll hit the entire coal patch. It's only 1.1 million, but it's decent. 
Where am I? I am on a my personal ship over Nalvis. So we're going to drop down to Nalvis. I'm going to go back down and then... Yeah. I'm not actually sure what my next step is. Part of me... Look, there's, there's a few things that I want to get done at this stage. The first is build up a proper base on Volcanus. But that's not really a priority. It's not really needed at the moment. It's nice, but for now we can keep um, just relying on the supplies that we send over to, from Navis. We don't need it to be 100% independent yet. And I think when I get closer to the mega base, that I'll definitely make it independent at that point. Because um, we'll have to overhaul the entire planet. And at that point, we'll have the foundation, this foundation unlocked. And then we can really go ham on Volcanus. Because, yeah, if we do it now, if we try and make it fully independent with some decent mining outposts, some decent research, um, you know, decent infrastructure, without unlocking that foundation, it's going to be annoying. It's going to be very annoying. Um, so I'll just leave it for now. Now we could... We, we've got a choice, I guess, at this point. We could go to the next planet. And the next planet is 100% going to be Fulgura. We're going to go to the tech planet. We're going to check that out. We're going to see what the deal is with Fulgura. Um, and get some stuff going. Because if we have a look at our tech, uh, our tech thing... I just... I'm dirtying the, um, I want to get everything done before I go to the agriculture planet. Because that one is going to be annoying. It just is. It's just going to, like, spoilage. I don't know how to do with spo It's probably not going to be as bad a problem as I'm thinking. Especially if I just do a nice, simple setup. Like the one that I did on Volcanus. Just to get the signs out the door. Um, but then again, I mean, I'm all about massive amounts of caches. Do things spoil? On the belts, do things spoil in chests? These are questions that I need to answer. Um, if they spoil inside chests, then I have a serious problem. If they only spoil on the belts, then maybe I'm okay. But what do they spoil in the ship on the way home? Do they spoil at every stage before they get back to the... I, I don't know. I really don't know. But this, this, this looks, it looks a little bit messy. With the spoilage, it looks a little bit messy. So that, and in terms of what we need for research, uh, ad, okay, I haven't seen this research. What's going on here? Advanced thruster oxidizer. Okay, that's a lot of oxidizer. That's, um, that's a, how does that compare to the original recipe? Uh, 10, 2 and 10 to 75 in 2 seconds. And well, where's the next one? 2 and 10 in to 75 in 2 seconds. Where's the other? I've lost the other one now. 2 and 100 to 1.5k in 10. Okay, so that's a, that's a monster recipe. That's a monster recipe recipe for the thruster oxidizer having said that's a nice to have at the moment we don't really need it this one similar um advanced asteroid crushing get some calcite get some sulfur these guys both use calcite so we also get sulfur and then we also get copper jeez okay. well this is interesting because we could use this to be able to build advanced ammo, we could, because we got the iron and the copper um, and sulfur as well. I'm not sure what we could use the sulfur for, but we could use the iron and the copper to build piercing round magazines. And they do 16 damage instead of the 10 damage, which is, it's not that much better, but it's better. So if we have a huge ship, then maybe we could do that. Um, but that's kind of interesting. So, all right, go back, going back to this science. Um, health, I don't really care about. Tool belt, this is the equipment. This is not just more inventory size. So that I don't really like. Um, I'm assuming none of this is useful on Nalvis. I don't think it is. So we'll probably just ignore all of that. Artificial soil. Um, 
carbon fiber stack inserters. That's interesting. I haven't really looked at the stack inserters. Um, but yeah, that that will be good mega base tech. 100% good mega base tech. Not necessary anytime in the future. Stronger explosives, tree seedling. There's nothing really here. I'm going to be honest, there's nothing really here. Um, productivity module threes. It'd be nice to have, but eh. At this point, not necessary. Okay, the Spider-Tron. I'm gonna be honest, I really would like the Spider-Tron. I kind of got my heart set on the t I really would like the Spider-Tron. I don't know if that's enough to sway me though. I really don't know. Um, oof, asteroid productivity. My God. Increase yield from asteroid crushing. Okay, this, okay. Okay, this agricultural science pack has a lot of good tech behind it. It really feels like it does. Okay, let's let's go back over here. What do we got here? Lightning collector. Um, that's only useful on that. The tech planet. Shields, batteries, mech armor. Meh. Roboport. Yeah. Scrap recycler. Yeah. None of this. None of this actually does it for me. At the start of the game, I was like. Oh, a RoboPort. Oh, a bigger mecha armor. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm just like, meh. Like, none of this stuff really does it for me. Um, and quality module. I mean, like, why? Why would we get this? So, yeah. A lot of... Any, I mean, if Fusion Power was locked behind the tech reactor, reactor then maybe. That would be... Aquilo behind the cryogenic. So, yeah. Um... This does give me rail support foundations. Oh, it's only for the oil oceans, which I assume are on the tech planet. So I thought maybe it was lava support. I don't know actually where the lava supports are. Where are the lava? You can build on top of the rails on top of lava, right? I could have sworn there was a research for that somewhere. Maybe I already did it. That would be interesting. Uh, did I already do it? Where's my, where's my metallurgic science? Oh, here it is. Okay. Rail support. Oh, it's only planet Fulgura. So wait, is there no research to build rail supports on top of lava? Uh, I mean, I can kind of understand that. I mean, it's lava, so yeah, I mean, well, we are sending lava through pipes, so clearly we can create metal which can resist lava. So we should be able to do that for rail supports as well. Or oh, most water. That's a very ominous. Maybe on Aquilo it can't be placed. Although you'd... Yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting. We've got some very interesting stuff going on. So, in terms of... Um, what we're doing next. I mean, it kind of feels like the agricultural planet gives us the most stuff. But I really still want to leave it to last. I mean, let's have a recap. Productivity module 3, we can live without it. Spidertron, we can live without it. I, I can live without the Spidertron for now. It's nice to have this thing, we can live without it. There's nothing here that we need. Or oh, plastic bar productivity. Rocket... Okay, plastic bar productivity is nice. This one is just how many how many productivity recipes do we have? Because it seems like there's quite a few. All right, so we already got steel, and now we've got low density structures. Here we've got plastic and blue circuits and rocket fuel. So I didn't know about the plastic, but I knew about the other three, and I knew about the steel. Asteroid productivity, that's meh, nice, but meh. Rocket part productivity, research productivity. Okay, so there's nothing else hidden in there. I thought maybe there would be like three big ones, like the blue, the low density, and the rocket fuel, and then there'd be three smaller ones, like the plastic, the steel, and what? Solid fuel for this one? Okay, that does sound actually kind of lame, so no, never mind. Um, ammonia rocket fuel productivity. Rocket fuel from jelly. Okay, this is in... <laughs> 
So jelly has got to be the bio planet and then ammonia is probably the tech planet. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. We're not going to go to another planet yet and I don't think I'm going to develop Volcanus. I think we're going to do some work on Nalvis. Um, number one, I would like to make us crude oil independent. I don't want to be using crude oil anymore. We've unlocked the um, coal liquef liquefaction. So I'd like to start switching over to that. I, I, I actually want to start pulling the pin on... Well, it's interesting. I kind of want to make a bigger base. I kind of want to make... Um, I don't think I should, though. I think I'll do coal liquefaction. I think that's a good thing to do. I'm not sure if I want to do an overhaul of this base though. Uh, I'm not sure if I really want to. Because I kind of want to start building the mega base already. Because if you build like half the mega base, then suddenly you never run out of blue circuits ever again. Because you just got such an incredible amount of blue circuits pouring in constantly. That is just like insane. And you never need to worry about them ever again. You never need to worry about rocket fuel. You never need to worry about blah and blah, 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 blah. But I don't want to start building that yet because I don't know where our productivity is going to be. And the thing with that productivity is you kind of build around it. You build around the productivity. You use that in all of your different resources and um, plans and all that sort of stuff. And you, got, you have to take it into account, but our productivity is really up in the air. So either we start building the mega base now, and we have to say, okay, I'm going to assume that steel is going to be blah. I'm going to assume the base is going to be blah for steel. Like for steel, for example, what I would probably do is I'd probably get it up to steel productivity level 40, which is an increase of 500% which means there's a one-to-one -one ratio between the iron and the steel. And that would be perfect. That would be absolutely perfect because you send one belt of iron in, you get one belt of steel out. So that's what I'll aim for. Although having said that, this one increases by 1.5 every time. So let's have a, let's, let me do a little bit of a uh, little bit of math here. So, um, so what was it? It was like 1500 at the start. So 1.5 to the power of 11 times 1... Okay, no, that's perfect. 129,746. And that was to the power of 11, which gives us 12. Okay, let's do that again. One point to the power of 39 times 1500 okay so that's 11 billion um that's going to be a problem that's 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 going to be a bit of a problem uh we cannot do 11 billion science i i'm sorry we just can't <laughs> Oh my god, 11 billion science. So, okay, so the one to one iron to steel ratio, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. All right, let's 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 aim a little bit lower. So that was to the power, okay, 1.5 to the power of 19 times 1500. Okay, so that's 3.3 million. That's doable for a mega base. Um, you think about it, 1,000 per minute. Uh, so if we divide that by 1,000, 3,325 minutes, which is 55 hours. Uh, I mean, it's doable. It's definitely doable. And a lot of these guys as well, um, Like a lot of these, this would probably be the same. I mean, look, running a mega base for 55 hours to get steel up to level 20 is a little bit nuts. And I would want to do it for all of these. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to aim for 10. We're going to aim for 10 and then 
5 to the power of 9 times 1500, 57,000. Which is this, 57,000. That's doable, that's easily doable. So I think that's what we got to do, is we got to, um, we got to put all of these miscellaneous little things up to level 10. And level 10 will give us double productivity. So it's basically doubling the research rate. So you put in five, you get out two. Uh, we could push it up. Did I try 15 already? I'm not sure if I tried. Because here's the thing. For steel, 15 would make a lot of sense because it would push it up to plus 250%. It would push it up to 250%, which means it's a one to two. It's a perfect one to two ratio, which is really nice. So for every two iron, you get one steel. Let's, let's have a look at that one. Uh, 1 1.5 to the power of 14 times... Okay, 437,000. That's 437,000 divided by 1,000 divided... At seven hours. Okay, that's that's a lot more. It's better than 55 hours. It's seven, only seven hours. We'll think about it. I think for this point, I will aim to have everything at 10, and then I'll run the base at that. So all of the all of the different productivity researchers uh, will aim to have them at level 10. And level 10, um, all up, it costs is probably about two to fifty thousand research or something like that which is a decent amount i mean we're building 120 per minute at the moment so 250,000 takes a while but once we get the mega base up we can build them assuming we'll reach level 10 and then we'll be all good and of course mining we will just shoot for the moon we'll just keep this one doesn't go up multiplicatively it just goes up by a thousand each time so we can really boost that into the stratosphere and, oh, one thing I actually did want to check. Uh, if we go over to Volcanus, have a look at this guy. Stalling at the moment. Okay, productivity does apply to these mining drills as well. I was pretty sure it did, but yeah, look at this. Our productivity up, is up to like 170%. So that is very impressive. But we're going to have that into, we're going to have that through the roof eventually. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. In fact, maybe I should be pushing that a bit more now, but uh, whatever. Low density structures, we'll get a bit of work on those. Look at this, we're using barely any calcite. It's awesome. These guys, the, actually, they're going to run out pretty soon, but whatever. Have you not done all your mining drills yet? It's taken ages to build all these mining drills. Anyway, we're, oh, I just keep on talking. It is incredible how much I talk in this video. It is just nuts. So anyway... What was I planning in? I got distracted. Um, so I think we're going to keep the base. I'm kind of holding off doing anything, anything really big at this point. So we're going to 100%. The first thing we're going to do is coal liquefaction. 100%. We're going to move over to a coal economy. We're going to get rid of the crude oil. We're going to do that. 100%. That's the first thing we're going to do. After that... Um, we're going to make sure everything's solid. So, um, this one's pretty solid. All of these stations are full at the moment. And we're still pumping out the research. I mean, we're still going nuts on the research, but... Yeah. We're not... Oh, we're obviously, we're not doing much at the moment to really destroy uh, all of these guys. So, they're going good. They're going very, very solid. And, yeah... So we're not really taxing the base. I don't really want to go for like a midpoint 240 uh, SPM or something like that. I might, it might be a good idea at some point to knock this base up to 1k SPM just for the first four or five sciences. And then so I can churn this through at rapid pace while I explore other planets and while I set them all up and stuff like that. Like, by the time I'm going out to, like, the shattered planet and stuff like that, it's probably a good idea to have a 1k SPM back on now Vs 
rather than still just chilling with 120 SPM on now Vs and I'm all the way out to the Shattered Planet because yeah. So at some point we got to pull the trigger. The reason I wouldn't want to pull the trigger, I well I'm definitely not going to pull the trigger yet. We want level 3 speed and level 3 productivity modules. We definitely want both of those in the bag and we need to have done agricultural science to get level 3 productivities. So we're not going to do much. All right, here's the plan. We're not going to do much on Nelvis. We're going to fix up the crude oil a little bit, coal liquefaction. Uh, we're going to go to the tech planet just because I want to experience that one first. We're going to set that up, get that science done, blah, blah, blah. Easy as. And then we're going to go to this one, get that set up, 120 SPM, get the productivity module set up. Um, and then after we've done both of those, then we'll start mega basing a little bit. Um, yeah, then we will start mega basing on now V. Start worrying about the 1k SPM. Because I'm not sure if there's anything on Aquila. On Aquilus that we really need. On the cryogenic science. It doesn't look like it. Um, I mean, fusion reactor? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Uh, I don't know how this works. I got no idea how it works. Uh, that's weird though. I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we'll be sending these fusion power cells back from, but I'll, we're probably going to have to build them on Aquila. So I'm not going to wait to build a mega base for this guy. That's That seems like it's going to take forever. And then this one is like end game, end game, end game sort of stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay, I think that's a good plan. I think it's a good plan. So, coal equification, um, get us off the crude, do the two planets, get the modules being produced, the level three modules on now Vs with some resources shipped back. So we're gonna have to ship back some biter eggs from the other planet. Um, we could ship back some spoilage. Both of these come from the agriculture planet. That's very interesting. I don't know. I've never used efficiency module threes. I've never used them. Um, but yeah, so the speed modules as well. We'll ship back that tungsten carbide stuff. Um, yeah, and we'll get the big drills. What else? Is there anything else that we want from these from the mega base? Recycling. Eh, don't really need any of that. Don't really need any of this. This is only going to be useful on that. I mean, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's really anything else that we kind of want. I mean, it's, obviously we'll have all of this. We'll have spider trons and stuff like that. But there's nothing else. There's definitely nothing on Aquila that we need for the mega base, for the Nauvis mega base. I mean, that would be nice, but it's a very nice to have. Very nice to have. So, yeah, okay, we got our plan and we're going to execute it. Coal, two planets, now Vs Megabase, 1k SPM. And that, that will be a full train based um, build with probably different stations for everything. Um, I might do it a little bit distributed i'm not sure like for example um like we could we could do i'm not going to go into mega base design yet because it's nuts but i think i don't want think i want to have like one station for iron smelting i don't think i want to do that i don't think i want to do on-site iron smelting either i think i want to have like a separate iron station iron smelting for each of these i want to have in the past, I've just had one station that does one thing. So yeah, I got a station that produces iron plate. Then you got another station that does iron gear wheels. Then you got another station that does blah, blah, blah. So I think what I want to have is I want to have a red science station. It takes in copper ore, takes in iron ore, and it produces red science. And that's it. And then for this guy, Green science, you have exactly the same thing. You have a, uh, so it takes in iron ore, it takes in copper ore, and it produces green science. And something like that. And we may break that in the future. 
like for this guy, um, we may not make steel on site. We may make steel in another place or something like that. Like we may have a, a red circuits. A red circuits would be good to have its own independent station. Uh, maybe plastic. I'm going to map it out. I'm going to provide, I did a Crastoria run before. And what I did was actually mapped out all the products in an Excel spreadsheet. And I sort of positioned them and figured out which stations I wanted to build and where to try and, um, and basically it had a top bottom. So you had all the stuff in the middle and then it had a bottom station where it got load, uh, unloaded and a top station where everything got loaded for the next one. So it, well, everything came in here, unloaded, and came up there and, lo and um, loaded onto the next train. And I had it set up so that the output of this was needed by the one on the top. So it was like very sort of well laid out so you didn't have a lot of traffic going on. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but yeah. we got to think about a lot of stuff. we got to think about train sizes. Because if we're sending ore directly into the stations... That means the ore is going to have to travel a long way because the ore is going to be all the way out in the middle of nowhere because we're going to have to go out to the middle of nowhere to get all the high resource nodes. Um, and yeah, it's going to be... And then how, how long is that ore train going to take? Previously, I've had like ore transferal stations. Basically, you have one big station here. You've got 10 or 12 really big ore trains coming out from the middle of nowhere. They go in here. And all it does is it transfers ore to another station where a little train picks it up and then just goes a short distance to the specific station that needs it. Um, which is kind of awesome. But I could make that station also smelting. And then you've just got one station for iron ore or something like that. One station making iron plates, which is interesting. I don't know. i got to think about it. i got to think about it. There's, I, I could go on for another hour talking about mega-based design techniques. Don't ever get me started on my ideas for a 5k mega base. We're not doing that. 100% not doing that in space age. Maybe one day. But yeah, I was actually thinking about doing a 5k mega base in vanilla, but I never go around to it. Um, it's, the problem is Factoria is too addictive and I didn't want to dive into it and get sucked into it. But then space age came out and I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go and play it and I'll do a YouTube series. But yeah, you know, it's good. After after I do this, I'll probably <clears throat> I'll probably won't build another base. I'll just sit this base back and say, "All right, I'm done with Space Age for like another year or so and maybe I'll pick it up later on if I like lose my job and I have unlimited spare time." But yes. It is I love this auto save. This auto save is so quick. Maybe they'll change later. Anyway, we've got our plan. I've sort of said it like five or six times at the moment, so we don't need to keep talking about it. But it's good. And let's just double check on our science. Still producing 180 per minute. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, our low density productivity is going sweet. No problems with the science. We still got 3.9k what is our pickup i think it went around i think it went around and got another load i think so because it was up down to 1300 and now it's back up to 2400 so yeah i think it went and it got another load because we must have emptied it out so that's awesome and i love the way it just keeps sending out these little rockets with these little bits in there so that's beautiful all right i'm going to finish the video off now because i've been talking for too long um, but when we come back next time, uh, I don't think, I'm not going to do another video for the coal liquefaction. That's just a waste of a video. But the tech planet, once I've got 120 SPM on the tech planet, I uh, will come back and we'll check it out. And I don't expect it to be too painful, but it's going to be interesting. And then, oh, then I've got to do the agriculture. I'm, I mean, it's, this is an amazing game, but for some reason, I'm just not looking forward to it. Um, I love caching things. I love putting things and just leaving them there. The idea of spoilage is... It's not going to be as bad as I think it is. I think that I've got dread of spoilage, but I think it's overrated. I think I'm going to be able to get around it. The question is, how is spoilage going to affect the mega base? That's the real question. That's going to be the real pain. Um, but anyway, let's talk about it later. And at least we'll have the recycler. Um, because I don't actually know what we do with spoilage. What do we do with spoilage? Um, 
because you get stuff spoiled. I don't know. I don't actually know. I, I assume that anything on that planet can be spoiled. And then it just slowly turns into like actual spoilage, which I'm assuming is a different item. But I got no idea what to do with it. I don't see any tech. There's like egg cultivation and blah, blah, blah. I'm assuming it's not just... What does this do? Burnt... Oh, okay. We burn spoilage and we turn it into carbon. That's interesting. That'll be... That'll be cool. Uh, I'm not sure what carbon is used for, but... Okay, so I reckon there'll be some system where carbon is required. And so you will 100% let things spoil on purpose in order to get the carbon that you need for some other part of the recipe. Okay, that's cool. I like that. So spoilage will be, I'm assuming spoilage will be required at some point. Okay. Before we end up the video, let's start making some more. Uh, oh, where are these guys all going? Probably going after the supply thing. I want to make some more ships. Uh, what's the name of that? Uh, what's the name of that bloody thing? Fulgora. I'm never going to get that name right. Fulgora. Uh, let's... Uh, ST Fulgora Supply. And then ST Fulgora Pickup. So I'm going to trade two new ships. I'm going to go Volcanus Pickup. Copy that. Uh... And I'll put that over there. So that's my Volcanus pickup. And we can't actually go. Um, then we go to this one, which is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use a separate blueprint for that one. And we have to wait for these guys to actually be built. Um, which just means a rocket with the... Here we go. There's one of them. Okay, so Fulgura pickup. So this, this is our smaller one. And you can't move this blueprint around, it's just where it is. And we place that there. And... We're going to... We haven't actually unlocked Fulgura. I'll just leave this paused, I'll work out the schedule later. And then Fulgura Supply... Uh, again, is paused. So, there's the big one. Oh, hello. What's going on here? Okay, you know, you're fine. You're fine. All right. I don't think there's any changes in this stuff that's needed. Um, so we're just going to sit back and wait and those ships will just get built in the background. Uh, I could also build the clever ones, but I don't want to overload my, uh, my rocket silos unnecessarily. So I'm just going to build those two. And we are going to uh, leave it, let it go. You can see... It looks like it's built some space platforms, but it hasn't quite yet. It's already sent a couple of things up, which is nice. But yeah, those, um, all my space platforms are going to get used up quite quickly. And this is, this is, these are going to go nuts. I could create more of them, but man, there's quite a lot of it as it is. All right, we're going to finish the video off now. Somehow I managed to create another video over an hour for a small update. Whatever, I like talking. If you're still listening, then obviously you like listening. I can't hear myself talk because of all the rockets taken off, so we're going to move away, and we're going to go over to Fulgura Pickup. And so far it's sending everything onto this bloody space platform, except for the actual platform bits, which is crazy. Uh, there's no chance of it being overloaded, but I have overloaded it before by accident. And what happens is everything just spreads around with the little X thing on it. And then as soon as you've got space, it automatically gets collected. So, <coughs> there's no need for robots on a space platform, but the space platform kind of has the same functionality as, as it, if it's full of construction robots everywhere. So yeah, where are the space platforms? There are none being sent. Why are there none being sent? I guess these are high priority or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, we're done. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to finish it off by actually looking at our awesome Volcanus base, which is very tiny, but it'll get bigger later on. It's going to be a lot of trains doing a lot of cool stuff. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys later.